the climb master of David. The fool says in his heart, There is no gods. They have perverted. They have done abominable deeds. There is none who does good. They have dared to even pervert God's word. Martin Luther, founder of the Protestant Church, added to God's word in Romans 3 verse 28, so that he could teach justification by faith alone. Not content, he even insulted the letter of James by calling it a letter of straw, since Luther's teaching contradicted what the Holy Spirit inspired Apostle James to write. They have perverted, and they have done abominable deeds. This is what Luther's biographer, who likes him by the way, this is what Luther's biographer wrote of Luther's attitude towards the Jewish unbelievers. Then he, Luther, came out with a vulgar blast in which he recommended that all the Jews be deported to Palestine, expelled from Germany, send them back to Palestine. Failing that, they should be forbidden to practice usury, should be compelled to earn their living on the land, their synagogues should be burned, and their books, including the Bible, should be taken from them. This is written by Roland H. Bankton in his biography of Martin Luther's life, Here I Stand, A Life of Martin Luther. Luther, Melanchthon, and Zwingli all approved the murders of even peaceful Anabaptists who were more godly than they were. Calvin, who believed in the non-existent trinity, approved of the murder of Sabbatus, who did not believe in the trinity but believed in some other kind of error. One idolater murdering another idolater. Protestants, these are your first generation founders of the Protestant Church. They never repented of their sins. Yet you all still believe their perverted teachings. Some of you even regard them to be your heroes. Adulterous remarriages, remarriages are permitted in your churches. Many Western churches permit same sex marriage. If Singapore's churches keep compromising with the cultural norms of the world, more and more churches will start to permit same-sex marriages, marriages, eventually. The fool says in his heart, there is no gods. They have perverted. They have done abominable deeds. There is none who does good. If you behave in these ways, actually, you are worse than the fool described here because the fool says in his heart, there is no gods. Whereas, many of the preachers in the churches are saying there is God. There is a God. Jesus is God. Holy Spirit is God. We worship them. We are their followers. And then still pervert God's word. Still do abominable deeds and excuse them. That makes you, if you do that, make, makes you worse than the fool described here. Because at least this fool has a consistent worldview. He says there is no God, so he acts like there is no God. If you say there is a God and you still act like there is no God, isn't that even worse? He is looks down from heaven on the sons of Adam to see if there is any who is prudent, who seek after gods. Can, can that, are there anyone left who do that, who seek gods? Verse 3, they have all turned aside. Together they have become corrupt. There is none who does good, not even one. Have they no knowledge, all the evildoers who eat up my people 
as they eat bread and do not call upon He is, those evildoers have no knowledge. They eat me up. They do not call upon He is in truth. They call upon their non-existent so-called God of man-made tradition, the God they call the Trinity. There they are in great terror, for God's is with the generation of the righteous. You would shame the plans of the poor, but he is, is his refuge. You could have learned the fear of God's wrath by reading his scripture and taking his warnings of judgment seriously, but you rejected all the warnings. So you will have to experience the great terror of God's wrath one day, and then you will know the experience, which you could have avoided if you only paid attention to the warnings. You can try and destroy me with the divorce, but God is with me, and He is my refuge. Who will give salvation for Israel from Zion? When He is restores His people from captivity, Jacob shall rejoice, Israel shall be glad.